Okay, putting together a Stiga ST3000. My son has saved up his money since May and got it and bought this, and now we are assembling. And we've got the casters on, and some of the internet things say four hours. And let me just tell you, it's heavy, very heavy. So uh, the casters are easy. Putting these little caps on are easy. These little hat caps, you just tap it on with a hammer. These little plastic ends, you just set them on the ground and push this down. And then the, one of the first tricky parts is lining these up because they're just slightly longer this way. The center of this is slightly longer from here than this is. That's shorter. And if you get it wrong, you can see. So be sure you line it up correctly. You can see how it's off there. So then that's kind of the first stumbling block. But anyway, we'll catch up later. And step two is done. Put on those uh, plates and the spacers, hopefully correctly. Step three, putting the support board in. Make sure you put the board in so the stig is on the outside and that the plates are on the inside. Okay, step three is done. Using these wing nuts, and they say attach it securely, as opposed to these, which I did not attach securely yet. There's still room, so they must need a little bit of play, so we left those pretty loose. That's step three. All right, step four. This looks crazy here. Got the supports and the linkage and all that. And so here we've got all the parts lined up and let's see how this goes here. One thing I was curious about is they all have this kind of indentation on it, but they're all faced the same direction. So I'm guessing it doesn't matter. I'll let you know. So this is why you need to keep these loose is because it suggests loosening them. So you can fit this in between here, but I might have left it loose enough where you could do that. But I can see why if you tightened it much more than I did, you'd have to loosen them up. And you don't want to do that, so keep them loose. Okay, so we put the bolt through here. Plastic, whoop, need to focus. Plastic washer in there. Plastic washer in there. Spacer here. And then my 10-year-old pointed out to me, so hold it there. Keep it still. We're kind of shaking. I'm shaking. So see this, these have one size and then a smaller size. So it does matter because it won't fit on there. So it's pretty much uh, idiot proof, but just something to note. We'll go like that and then we'll put the bolt on. So that's that. Okay, still on step four, it said to tighten all these bolts securely. And then it says, note, tighten. So this bolt and this nut. So. It says tighten nut so that end of bolt 27 is even with the edge of nut, which I assume would be this, which is like that. Because you don't want to tighten this too much because I figure this has to move to adjust the table. But we'll kind of check on that later. But it's kind of contra. One thing says tighten it securely and it says to the edge of nut. Because you do want movement. If you tighten it too tight, it doesn't really move. So we'll get back to that. Step four is complete. Uh, my second helper, my 10-year-old, reminded me as well. <laughs> I was starting to put the nut on this one. And he was like, uh, Dad, I would forgot to put the red extender on there. Whoops. Anyway, so good, good for help. So now it's time to put uh, supports and things on tables. And that's really heavy, and my back is terrible. So I may need waiting for that. So back to you later. All right, so here's the back of the table Will your you know, where you'll be playing and hitting. And then up here is where the net goes, and it's important because there's no white line, and that's how they help instruct you where you're going to put some of the screws and all that on the other side. Okay. And I don't expect you to see this, but there are no pilot holes along that side where there's not paint. So along the net side, there are no pilot holes. But if you move down here along the back side of the table, there are pilot holes all along this side so that's how you tell so that the u-bolts and or the u-clamps are going to go there 
in there. Okay. Okay, step five through nine, and this is putting these on the on the table. So you have to make sure that you're on this edge without the pilot holes. So the stripe is down that side. And got line up with all the pilot holes on here. And then also this hole here. Make sure that's lined up. So that's what I'm trying to do. I'll show you when I'm done. Step 10 is done. We put these brackets on. Uh, put those like stoppers, that, and those brackets. So far, so good. Okay, so these little end caps go on here. Number seven goes on that end cap, but they are super loose. <laughs> so we'll probably end up taping or gluing those down. We're on now on step 11 through 13, putting on the end rails. So we've got uh, steps 11 through 13 done. All the rails are up. There weren't pilot holes for all those over there, so we've got some of those. I think we're good there. Next are the braces, or the floor legs. And step 14 and 15, the legs are done. I just built both legs for both sides. And they went together easy, not much to talk about there. Okay, one side is done. I added, since I last showed, added these corners and the legs. No challenges there really. Everything was fine. Now we're in after I built rebuild the or build the next side, then we'll be doing this. It says it'll require two adults. Yeah, that's gonna take three. One, two, and then I imagine a third guiding it in to these spots. I'm not looking forward to that. I have a terrible back. So it'll be interesting. See how we do that. Uh, toodles. Well, there it is. We finished it. Good job, team. It took us two tries on one tabletop and three tries on the other to get them to slide into these posts here. But we did it. Uh, what else? Brackets are all on. And there we go. And yeah, the red bars.